It's like being back at home, actually. I was talking to Santiago earlier on about the Bartlett show. And I think the attendance this year is a record, record number of people. And why I think everybody is here is really symbolized in the logo of this show. The eye. The eye now is on the work. The eye now is on the quality and creativity that we produce as an industry. Creativity right now has never been more valuable. It's the primary asset of brands and the most important currency of any brand. If you want to know that the eyeballs of the world are on creativity right now, look no further than you can this year. Every single major marketeer on the planet was there. And they were there for one reason, to find the best ideas. More importantly, to find the people behind the best ideas. People who see the world differently. People who look beyond the finish line, who look beyond the horizon. People who really value creativity and use creativity in a really powerful fashion. And I'm a great believer, and live and let the brand believe passionately that creativity has the power to change human behavior. And today, James and I are going to share with you our thoughts on this subject matter. It's called Creativity Without Borders. It's a shift we're all feeling. Our industry right now is at a zeitgeist moment. The tectonic plates of global marketing are continually changing. Not only do we have technology at our fingertips, we're in complete control. We're in the battle for people's attention. Brands are no longer competing against each other, but with the whole popular culture. Let's take a look. Who'd have thought the music video from a Korean pop star side would have hit nearly 2 billion views, making it the most popular YouTube, YouTube video in history. 2 billion eyeballs on that idea. Much about conducting a conversation 
talking with people, let alone maintaining a real-time 24-7 dialogue with the recipients of our messaging. And also, cultural isolation kept us largely separated. It's easy to forget, isn't it, just how geographically silent we were pre-YouTube, pre-Twitter, pre-Facebook. Sure, our industry shared the best work at festivals like our love but if you could get your hands on a magazine, on a global, or a global trade magazine, they gave you a glimpse of the larger global landscape. But the problem we all faced was that Tokyo didn't know what Buenos Aires were doing, was doing, and vice versa. If our, net, you know, if our network policy in Sydney created a wall meeting campaign that would attract the same group of audience on Harlow, well, the chances of you learning about that would be weeks, maybe months later. We all know now our contemporary position looks much different. In fact, we could spend days and days and days talking about why 2013-14 is a radically different time. But because this combination of speed, technology, and globalization has so dramatically transformed our industry, it's important to pause, take a moment to reflect on our condition so that we can chart our course forward. We are right now amazingly placed to benefit from the ever-changing technological, social, and cultural shifts we're all experiencing. Today, James and I have to share with you our core and wavering tenets that we believe will set the stage for this new era. One of all this creativity. So let's go to the rules. Rule one, cultural fluidity. It's no secret that we live in an all-digital, real-time, creative world where ideas circulate freely. Means like Agnes Star transcend language, they break barriers, and become equally powerful and relevant in rural Canada as they do in urban Buenos Aires. And it's no surprise given that 70% of YouTube's traffic is from outside the USA. And more than 100 hours of video are uploaded every minute of every day. Every piece of content we write is shared on the global stage. Some are hits, some are complete misses. But today's work requires brands to be social by design, to be more like humans. What great social unity isn't a company or a product or a shared value or a purpose? It, it is that purpose. Purpose drives the conversation. It creates the value for that brand. Now more than ever, we're finding the most successful pieces of creative are the ones wet with very simple human insight. And here are several examples of work that touch every corner of the globe in seconds. All based on one simple human truth. And while they were created by agencies and clients, their reach was empowered by people. Metro trains don't waste a dime. It's an epic campaign, a famous campaign that made history in Canada year by winning not one, but five Grand Prix. With more than 62 million views, this idea is the most shared public service campaign in history. The campaign, of course, as we all know, went way beyond advertising and became part of the social fabric. It was instantly likable. It was instantly shareable. And most importantly, it made a massive impact. Let's took, take a look at this remarkable case. Young people don't listen to public safety messages. So how do you get them to care about being safe around trains? By turning your message into a cultural phenomenon. The idea was simple. Being unsafe around trains is the dumbest thing you could ever do. I wonder what's this red button do? Instagram and SoundCloud. And 
and generated huge and immediate viral effect. Within days, Dumb Ways to Die became the world's most shared video. The song was put on iTunes and climbed the charts in over 20 countries, making its way onto playlists all around the world. Radio advertising was purchased, but this song about rail safety was so popular it got played for free. The video was picked up by every television network in the country. Limited edition posters based on press and alcohol became collector's items. People shared their own versions of the song. Well, 
cheap paper evidence. Um, <laughs> the news is, uh, the world seems to think so. But the question you must ask yourself is this. If we released this film with this song five months ago, would it have the, would it have the same impact as it has today? For a campaign to cross borders, it needs a strong idea. And it needs also the right time. As creatives, we must always stay ahead of the curve, having our finger on the politics of culture. One final piece I'd like to show you is for the iconic Grand Fiat. In Latin America, and in this case Brazil, advertising frequently becomes part of pop culture. In June of this year, Fiat launched a campaign with the theme, Come to the Streets to celebrate the Confederation Cup Football Championships. Coincidentally, during that time, Brazilians were unhappy with the Brazilian government and initiated a mass protest in the streets. They borrowed Fiat's slogan for, the, for their signs, for their mantra, and for their media efforts. Let's take a look at this song that took to the streets. Brazil, June 6, 2013. Why didn't the entire country shout out a brand slogan? The Confederations Cup in Brazil. As the Brazilians, Fiat had the same feeling of being left out of the party. So, instead of a campaign, we launched a movement. Calling you all to cheer in the only place capable of receiving the entire country. Vem pra rua. In just a few days, the ball spread. It became the most watched car video in the history of Brazil. Is quite simple. 
Creativity rooted in a compelling human insight and mobilized by technology is culturally fluid. Now I'd like to turn it over to James Cooper, who is Leonet's recently named global head of social and mobile to take you through the next two rules. So that feels got brilliant. It's saying, what would be better than actually having your advertising chanted by thousands of people down the street? It's quite a moment. Um, where we're getting to with this rule is that um, it's all about the democratisation of creativity. So technology has given everyone, all of us, the right to be a creative, which is a baby frightening thought. Means of production, the channels of distribution have basically been turned over to all of us. So every single one of us has got access to potentially an audience of millions through our social sphere, through the reach from our social media channels. But what this um, actually means, what does this actually mean for us? Well, it means actually our competition isn't just advertising anymore, but it's everywhere. It's all of humanity. So the first example I want to show you, which I think is a really interesting example to exemplify this, is from Red Bull in the UK. Um, they're, often, they're often seen as kind of the masters of content. They create these kind of mega hits that we've all sort of seen, often from the feats of superhuman athletes. But what's less known, and what's often not acknowledged as much, is the actual way their ideas have got distribution built into their very being, built into the very fabric. It isn't just chance, it's not just mere coincidence that suddenly means they achieve this reach and compels them to start and means we all see it. It's kind of forensically produced that way. Their success and acclaim is kind of woven into it because of the way they work uh, as a brand. Um, they not only understand their audience, but they actually leverage their audience and they leverage them within their communications themselves. So it starts to play a really interesting role when you think about it. Their community is actually the communications platform, and the people are suddenly the media directors, which is a very powerful proposition. So this film was a really nice good example of this democratization of creativity. So the setting, the context, is that Red Bull, they have a huge amount of events worldwide, I'm sure you know. One of them was cliff diving in Wales in the United Kingdom. And they wanted to portray and show off this event, but they wanted to do it with a bit of a twist, a bit of a red bull take on things, I guess. So they shot a whole event, uh, but they shot it in a way that used Instagrammers. They handpicked four key Instagrammers, all with huge reach, huge social spheres, big followings. And what they did, they got them to shoot the event on their behalf. And then they took all of this and they recompiled over 20,000 individual Instagram shots into one hugely effective montage. Now the result, kind of even whatever you think of the aesthetic, is that you've got a piece of content that as soon as it appears, as soon as it's launched, it's famous because of the nature of the way it's put together and the very fabric of its being. So they can get it out there without any kind of paid for media support, which is really only in that kind of marketing. <clears throat> Let's take a look.
Superfly. So they cleverly still keep their content online at .com, so you can go and actually see the winning results. But what's nice is it's not particularly polished because of the way it's been put together, but it's got natural authenticity and legitimacy and of course this tremendous reach. So that's participation. And right now we really can't create content that isn't shareable, that can't be discovered, that can't be passed on. If we do, it's not succeeding. If we create TV spots that aren't talked about, that aren't inherent in social, they're probably not very good. So um, the next piece is a probably a really great example of something that's shareable. It's not called Bainter Part. Um, it's called Pub Lou Shocker. Have a look. <laughs> Find that opening, find that opportunity, and then take advantage to market that moment. 
Now, our work, of course, never stops. Creativity literally never pauses, but it's as important to listen for these moments. And listening is the key word here, because it's something that people often forget. It's important to listen for these moments, as that's where our greatest, great, great, greatest creative opportunities might arise. If we listen, if we switch on and up, we find that opportunity, and we can find little moments of magic. Now, the next example, it's very small, but it shows where this listening really comes in. It shows the power of marketing the moment just like this. How a brand, however tiny they might be, can actually look up front page news if they actually know how to find that right opportunity. So if they're always on strategy, if they're managing to listen, find that opportunity, then they can be super effective. Um, it's something we call listening to the whispers, and the example here is Jura, Jura whiskey. You may or may not know, there's a very remote island called Jura in the Inner Hebrides off the western coast of Scotland in the UK. It's a very tiny place, it's got like 200 people who live there, and nearly all of them work for the distillery making whiskey. It's a very magical island whose whiskey produce is kind of known the world over. Now, they're very small as a brand, but they were listening, and they noticed that the mighty Google through Google Maps, had managed to completely miss them off the map. Literally, there was no island of Jura, according to Google Maps. And they spotted this, and they found this in a moment, in an instant. And they realized this was their always on chance. This was where their opportunity to market the moment. So let's have a little look. <laughs> Lovely name. 
little demo is showing people very simple ways around home to get involved uh, and have some home improvement tasks. Let's take a look. Prestigious headlines, and more importantly, of the awards, 
it created a new cultural benchmark for the brand. Rutar Kent was interviewed by Sir Martin Sorrell, and he said one thing that really struck a chord with me. We have to do so much more than just advertising now. Advertising alone is no longer enough. We have to create apps that connect to people in an emotional way, in a visual way, in a valuable way. And this idea resonated with people and registered on the Richter scale. Take a look at small machines. The relationship between India and Pakistan is one that has seen a lot of roles. It's stressful, it's tense, it seems it's not improving and it's getting worse. It's only been 60 years that we have been apart. Before that, we were living harmoniously together. I think a little strife would go away if you took away the Papa in the middle of the two countries. It saddens me that we have this neighbor that we can't even go visit. They had this perception that they were in the head that that's the bad guy. But when they actually meet them, they realize, you know, what is like me? Mainly because there's no communication. They're near us, but we have no access to them. And it's sad. Because together, I think we will do wonders. Listen, as Jane said, listen 
and learn, and use what you learn to create content of human interest. And finally, global collaboration. We have a remarkable talent base on this planet. I look at the Leaven Company, I don't see offices, I see people, I see potential, I see ideas. When we unite as one, and we have the ability to create something really, really powerful, and more importantly, valuable for our clients. Ideas that have a transformational effect. Ideas that have magic. Our industry's future is all about discovery. It's all about curiosity. Coming full circle back to this, it's all about looking at life through a fresh lens, looking beyond the horizon. And you can draw inspiration from a quote from a great explorer, because I think we're all explorers. We're constantly out there looking for the new, searching beyond the horizon. This explorer was Christopher Columbus. And this was a man who was always searching for the new. And he was always looking beyond that horizon line. To him, there was no finish line. It was always something beautiful, something magical, something better beyond that line. So I'd like to leave you with this parting thought. You can never cross the ocean unless you have the courage to lose sight of the shore. Let's use this week, let's use the forthcoming year, let's find those ideas, let's look beyond the obvious and find those ideas that people are looking for. Because people now have the power and have the ability to choose what they want to pursue. We have the great content of mass human interest and mass valuable people. So I think this year will be the end of this show, and this is really a hat off to Santiago. And I think it's created a remarkable show in this part of the world. And this is home to some of the greatest, most fertile credit minds on the planet. It's a hotbed for creativity. Look at Canada this year. There were two bright stars, Australia, Australasia, and Latin America. There's amazing talent you with amazing vision. We see the world through a different lens and have the ability to create content that will make a seismic impact in society today. Take what you learned from this week, absorb it, extract the best of the best, and then create your own magic in the world today. So thank you for me and thank you for James. Thank you.